modesty disappearing. And so she loses her femininity. What happens when women begin to lose their femininity? Hmm? Then of course the men will start marrying Indonesian women. <laughs> but apart from that answer, <laughs> what happens when women begin to lose their femininity? The answer is the day will no longer be attracted to the night. And when the day is no longer attracted to the night, then the day will mate with the day. <laughs> and so homosexuality and lesbianism are the necessary, the necessary product of the feminist revolution. That has already come to many parts of the world and is constantly increasing. But that is not our subject. A slave woman gives birth to her mistress. This woman is down there in the hold of the ship and this one up here is first class and this one has embraced the feminist revolution. As the night tries to become day, the night will no longer be truly night. And so not only does woman lose her femininity, she loses something else. Come on, tell me. At least Singapore should be able to answer that. She loses her? Her fertility. Have I struck a call now, Singapore? She loses her? Fertility. As the night tries to become day, women lose their fertility. So they can't have babies. Because they now lack fertility. Wherever the feminist revolution has taken root, there have been declining fertility rates. Now you know what's going on in Singapore. Declining fertility rates. And so women have to go to clinics and spend huge sums of money to try to become pregnant. Because the womb is no longer fertile. But there's a second reason for declining fertility rates. It is not just the feminist revolution and the struggle for women's liberation. It is also the environmental pollution. The environmental pollution impacts upon men. I still have some hair on my head, but my wife is telling me it's getting thin up here now. What do you think is causing this? Why are men balding? Why are men losing their hair? <laughs> hmm? Environmental pollution has an impact. It takes its toll. The body, the biological body of a woman is far more fragile than that of a man. And so the impact upon her is greater. But he also suffers. Because the prophet said one of the signs of the last day is that one man would have to maintain how many women? Huh? Huh? Fifty. One man would have to maintain fifty women. He didn't say one man would have to marry fifty. Eh? <laughs> one man would have to maintain fifty. Doesn't this strike a bell that there's some mysterious change taking place in the sperm? Maybe the genetically re-engineered food that we eat. 
And so the number of children who are born who will be male will begin to decline and decline and decline. As genetically re-engineered food and as environmental pollution increases until eventually one man would have to maintain 50 women. This environmental pollution in the age of Dajjal, Dukhar, which causes climatic change as well, also impacts on female fertility. And so she's traveling first class, she can't have any babies. And the slave woman is down at the hole of the ship. But because she has been too poor to embrace the feminist revolution, her womb is still fertile. And so her womb will now become a factory. Her womb will now become a factory. She is impregnated and the baby is a first class baby. First class baby. But the slave woman has to carry the baby to term. At least for these nine months she will live like a queen. A good food to eat, clean water to drink and so on. But what happens when the baby is born? It is Muhammad Islam speaking fourteen hundred years ago in answer to the angel. When the baby is born, the baby is going first class. The mother remains as a slave in the bottom of the ship. And so a slave woman has given birth to her mistress. There's the child in all of this. There's the child in the river. There's the child in the feminist revolution. Is the child at work in the environmental pollution? What these five questions are telling us is you must embrace Islam. And after you've embraced Islam, you must live it. Live it. Live it with sincerity. Live it full time, not part time. And the heart must turn to Allah. And when you live Islam full time, then one day Allah will put noor into your heart. Light. They don't sell that light in the stock market. <laughs> the heart will now be able to see. And it is with that internal sign spiritual insight plus external observation observing the international monetary system that spirituality will now deliver to you the understanding of the world in which you live today the last age and so spirituality is not for taking a trip going up the arch and coming back down. That's not the purpose of spirituality. Spirituality is not for performing karanat, supernatural acts. Hmm? Raise your finger, it has life in it. That's not the purpose of spirituality. The purpose of spirituality is to deliver an internal capacity to see so that you'll be able to read the signs of Allah most of all in the last days. Before we end, uh, there are some books of mine which unfortunately we don't have with us tonight, they're all sold out. But there's Islam and Buddhism in the modern world which I, I announced to you was going to be published when I was here last time. It's now published. Islam and Buddhism in the modern world is outside. The Quranic method of curing alcoholism and drug addiction is also outside. And an interesting conversation between George Bernard Shaw 
and Maulana Abdul Alim Siddiqui, Rahimahullah. I edited the text and I also wrote a commentary. You can read it in probably an hour or two. And this book is also outside. Rabbana tukabbal minna inna ka inta samir alim wa tuba alayna ya Maulana inna ka inta tawab rahim. Ya rahmatika 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 ya rahm